to the beautiful Anne Frank Human Rights Memorial in Boise, Idaho. I'm here in front of the statue of Anne Frank. Martin and Anne, kindred spirits of Mar Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Anne Frank. In 1929, two babies were born on opposite sides of the ocean. They never met, they didn't even speak the same language, but their hearts beat with the same hope. On January 15, Martin's father, mother, and older sister beamed at their beautiful baby in Atlanta, Georgia. On June 12, Anne's father, mother, and older sister cooed at their beautiful baby, born in Frankfurt, Germany. But not everyone thought Martin and Anne were beautiful. When Martin was old enough to go to school, he had to go to a different one than his best friend because his skin was dark. Even worse, his friends stopped playing with him. Martin's skin hadn't changed, but suddenly his friend cared when he hadn't before. That made no sense. When Anne was ready for school, Adolf Hitler, the leader of the Nazi party, was elected to lead Germany. Jewish children like Anne were no longer allowed in public schools. Anne's family fled Germany for Holland, but when Hitler invaded Holland, anti-Jewish laws followed. Anne's school closed its doors to her. Suddenly, her friends didn't want to play with her anymore. Everywhere Martin went, he saw signs that said, whites only. He wasn't welcome in public parks, swimming pools, or restaurants. Martin didn't think that was fair. Everywhere Anne went, she had to wear a yellow Star of David to let people know that she was Jewish. She couldn't buy ice cream or go to a movie. Every day, more signs blared, no Jews allowed. Her father couldn't sell to non-Jewish customers. Nazis burned books by Jewish authors. When Martin was 13, he won a speech competition talking about black and white children playing together in harmony. He wondered if the right words could one day change unfair laws. When Anne was 13, she got a diary for her birthday. She was happy she could share her most private thoughts with Kitty, the name she gave her journal. But soon after she began writing, Jews were rounded up and sent to death camps. Anne and her family hid in the attic over her father's business. They had to be very quiet. They couldn't go outside. Trapped in the attic, Anne described how beautiful the world outside was, how light could brighten the deepest darkness. Martin finished high school at 15. Most colleges were for whites only, so he went to Morehouse College, a school for black students. There he learned about the Indian leader, Mahatma Gandhi, and how he won rights for his people using peaceful protests. Could the same thing work in America? Hmm. Martin decided to become a minister who would lead his people to stand up for justice. Anne, hidden in the attic, continued her studies as best she could. And every day, she wrote in her diary about her dream for a better world. Even with all the hate around her, Anne believed that people were really good at heart. When Rosa Parks was arrested for refusing to give up her bus seat to a white man, Martin, now a minister, organized protest marches. He gave speeches. He told people not to ride the buses until everyone was treated fairly. Martin shared his dream of a world where all were truly considered equal. His words gave people courage and strength. While Martin grew older, Anne's 15th year was her last. The Nazis stormed Anne's hiding place. They arrested her family and her friends hiding with them. Anne's diary was left behind, pages scattering on the floor of the dusty attic but she still believed in the power of simple acts of kindness. Martin won the Nobel Peace Prize when he was 35. He worked with President Lyndon Johnson to help pass the Civil Rights Act of 1964. 
At last, those ugly, whites-only signs were against the law. Only a few weeks before the concentration camp was liberated, Anne died along with her older sister. She would have been amazed that her diary, rescued by a family friend, became a bestseller. Her father, the only one in her family to survive the camps, had her book published. Actors performed her words on stage and film. The cramped rooms where she hid in Amsterdam became a museum dedicated to speaking out against hate. When Martin was 39, he was shot and killed by a man who didn't believe black people deserved the same rights as white people. But no one could kill the way Martin inspired others. Just as Anne's words will never die. Anne and Martin were born in different places, but they both dreamed that one day all babies would be seen as beautiful as all babies are. Love is stronger than hate. Kindness can heal the world. Both Anne and Martin were upstanders who used words and actions to help other people make the world a better place. What words and actions can you use today to help other people?